Okay, I want to get a quick feeling for how many software developers are in the room. Awesome, that's like the majority. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is some of the work that I've been doing over the past couple of years and trying to make, add a major feature into the primary um, core website, osm.org. Um, my name is Brian DeRocher. I'm a volunteer mapper in Washington, D.C. Um, I've been a 14-year volunteer, and I've been working on uh, this one feature for a very long time, I think affected by the pandemic. Um, as you know, the core website actually does have a lot of good features in it built into it. Um, a lot of detail. I'm kind of short on time, so I'm going to skip over some details. Um, but what I'm talking about is software development of this website, but some of the ideas that I'm talking about apply to all open source projects in the uh, open free map community. Uh, I wanted to mention that the core website was created about 17 years ago. Uh, here's the first commit by Steve Coast. This is for the Rails port. It pre before this, it existed in PHP. Um, it is built in Ruby. It's a Ruby on Rails framework. It's Postgres, but it is not geospatial, geospatially enabled. Um, just to let people know, it's, it's not using PostGIS. And here's one of the things I really want to focus on. The core team is just two people. They're also volunteers. Okay. Um, they do about one commit to that per day, and overall, there have been about 200 people who have made a change to the core website. Now, here's the slide that I really want to focus on. It's from XKCD. It's like, these are the two volunteers who are working on OSM.org, right? And this is the community up above that we are all sitting on top of. Um, and I, my point here is that if you want to make a change to OSM.org, you got to jump through a lot of hoops and get your shit right, like get it perfect, or they won't accept it. And the reason is because there's only two guys who are working on it. And if it was some sort of unstable change or drew a lot of attention, or like it's, it's them who have to deal with it. So they make you do your job um, and get your stuff perfectly together. So let's say you have an idea and you want to work on some feature. What are your first steps? My, my suggestion is to start communicating to the, to the core team, Andy Allen and Tom Hughes. Um, tell them what, what is the idea that you want to work on. I'm sure you're not the first to think of this. The, the feature that I've been working on for years was started in 2013 and abandoned, so I, I was re reviving it. Um, and then they'll give you suggestions on how to get started, what's the right approach, um, and, and they can answer any questions that you have. Um, start going down the right track and you know, don't get misled. You can, um, can you see that? Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of resources to talk to them uh, uh, over IRC, which is now these days going over matrix, uh, the mailing list. Um, you can open up a ticket on GitHub saying, I have this idea, let's talk about it. And you can discuss it on GitHub. Um, and there are plenty of pages in the wiki about development. Um, can I go down here? No. So this is the database structure. Get to know this structure of the database. Um, you might be wondering what this is. This is the user table on um, user nodes, ways, relationships. Um, up above are the currents, and down below are the historical information. Over here, information about diary entries, friend relationships, GPS traces, um, and other things, uh, support tables on the bottom. Um, historically, OpenStreetMap wasn't built in Docker. They're starting to use Docker, not on their production servers, but in a development environment. It's great um, because it gives you isolation from the rest of the projects on your laptop. It, it sets you up with the right version of Ruby, the right version of Rails, and it sets up your, your environment. You can also use Docker Compose to um, set up your database, reinitialize your database. And when you're running automated tests, it's really great because it'll wipe out the database, recreate the database every single time for the test. Um, I suggest customizing the Docker Compose file and building a test version um, and just running these commands every single time. So you want to clean the database, you want to migrate, you want to do your linting to make sure every comma and space and semicolon is there. Um, run the automated test through and then run security tests and break man. Um, you really want to get 100% um, passing. And when you write a new feature, you want to write automated tests that cover your new feature. Um, you may think it Docker imposes like a barrier, but you can run one-off tests if you'd like. Um, 
Here's the biggest mistake that I made when I started the project, my own project. I was in Cucumber. I like the testing framework, Cucumber, which is behavior-driven development. And when I submitted that, they're like, they looked at me like I had three heads, you know, it's like, no, no, no. We use mini test. So just use mini test. Don't even think about using our spec. Just, just, just use mini test. Um, here are three of, no, four of my, these are the four features that I'm working on right now. It's a new feature to add a top level navigation item to the osm.org website to support communities. So geospatial communities or communities of interest. Okay. Um, it was so big that they, they asked me to break it up into four different stages. And then even this one alone with 100 commits. So they asked me to turn it down to just 10 commits. So um, they do that for their own special reasons. Like when there is a bug, and they want to see what caused it. They want to see the one commit that caused it, not the not the five or five or ten commits spread out. Um, uh, they do pull requests. It's a pretty standard procedure where you do one pull request per feature. Um, you could submit your pull request early, ask if you're on the right track, um, and then they'll they'll raise issues and concerns about your pull request. You work on it together. It's a really collaborative process. Back to what Stephanie was saying before. You know, it's, it's open source software. And it's it's for real. There is a dev site, so you can see your feature in a production-like environment and share the URL. And then you really start to get feedback, not just from the core team, but also from your stakeholders and potential users. OK, so that's my talk. And um, if you have any questions about contributing to osm.org or any of the uh, uh, tools in the environment, just let me know. Thank you.